Ladies and gentlemen, um, I see the list isn't big, but just um, with respect to lens, the approval uh, system and delays that are continuing, uh, I, can, I can say this much, that I apologize to anybody who is facing difficulties, but we actually have bettered the processes uh, that are in place to try and get the approvals as quickly as possible. Now what also must be realized is that ever since uh, the change has taken place with respect to try and get it done quickly, even a two day, uh, extra two days is now cause for complaint. So the complaints rise because there's just two days extra that's taken to get uh, in, uh, consents and approvals done. One of the difficulties that is faced at plans, and I, uh, the Honorable Chair General actually pointed out, is uh, we do have a bit of a lack of staff in terms of surveyors, uh, not enough qualified people to do it. So these are some of the difficulties that we do face that actually cause these problems and getting people out on the ground to monitor, uh, monitoring teams, etc., to actually get these approvals in place. But it's not an excuse. It is something that is being dealt with and um, we are trying to ensure that we actually comply with the SOP and get things done on time. But as I said earlier, earlier on, I think it was uh, quite a few months ago, if you do face issues and problems, 9908797 is the number. Call me directly and we will expedite as much as we can. With respect to the SME sector um, and the possibility of a centralized uh, body to work, I'm not sure if everybody had listened, but I'll just say the same message again. We actually have a, an MSME central coordinating agency. The actual law uh, is being drafted and the master plan developed. An MSME central coordinating agency will be operationalized to deliver uh, basically business incubation, mentoring and training as well as uh, innovation services for, for all the MSMEs. And in a nutshell, the budget uh, is about $2.8 million has been allocated for this particular year and uh, it's the setting up uh, uh, to provide relief in terms of first time MSME business licenses and applicants for all business licensing fees and other related, <coughs> other related fees. And within that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the most important ones, I think, also falls uh, the Youth Entrepreneurship Scheme, which is the YES Scheme. Now, this, the objective of that is to provide immediate assistance to, uh, in the form of grants to young and budding Fijian entrepreneurs who have, uh, just like the ones next door, who have innovative and, and bankable ideas and projects and this will assist them in transforming their innovation into, into such commercial ventures that will improve their livelihoods. It's actually uh, for people who are aged between the ages of 18 and 30. Um, the Minister of Economy thinks that 18 and 30 is youth. Anything beyond 30 is no, no longer youth. So you have to be between 18 and 30 to apply. Uh, the applicants obviously must uh, possess uh, a technical or vocational or a university degree uh, from a recognized institution. There, there will be a selection panel uh, consisting, comprising about 15 private sector uh, representatives and that's actually, I can make the announcement, it's, it's going to be chaired by the CEO, not of Fiji, but CEO of ANZ. So he's, he's the one who's chairing it and um, it's a wonderful partnership that we have. And I think what's happening next door is a start to all of this. Some of the key benefits uh, that come out of the S program, uh, basically that it, you know, if you are going to develop a mobile app or, or, or a website for which young people you can access by mobile phones, etc., you know, um, relevant information on the S and some queries, recipients will actually receive the relevant business tools by the ministry and mentoring uh, and work placements and attachment within the private sector. So it's an engagement not just by government, it's an engagement with the private sector and government and companies will be arranged where applicable, applicable to actually get those um, uh, attachments done. The projects will obviously require some hand-holding um, exercises and be assisted through this with an incubation um, center until such time as they are ready to, to roll out as a, as a viable venture. And just um, as early as yesterday or last night, we had also had discussion with some of the other banks who are keen to assist as much as possible um, with respect to just uh, hand, with a hand-holding exercise to take these people through, through uh, to fruition. Um, with the other one, the next one. Ease of doing business. Ease of doing business. I think uh, Honourable Minister of Economy and myself had actually said quite a lot about this in Parliament, about how it was skewed and not 
too much needs to be said, but we are doing as much as we can. We've had both the ministries um, looking at where we can actually uh, ensure that we, we do the right thing. One of the, just an example of how we actually do this, one of the um, things that has been set up to ensure that we fast track processes and get the processes right, if you would have seen is the building permits and evaluation committee. It'll, it'll actually provide uh, for, uh, for building permit applications for commercial industrial permits. Uh, it gives them a single window and this fast track process will provide for an overarching layer of, uh, that will bring together the relevant approval agencies as part of the business processing evaluation committee and building permits will be granted uh, a strict timeline. It works uh, in conjunction with the, all the author other authorities that are there and there is an allocation in the budget for that. Now this is just one of the measures uh, that are in place with respect to us ensuring that our ease of doing business rating is, is better than what we have. And as I said earlier, one of the biggest things uh, that was the cause of that problem was that the institutions that, had, uh, that they had visited with respect to getting information were pretty much all anti-government and you're not going to get the right answer. It wasn't a, a, the sample that we used, was used wasn't right across the board by their own admission, but definitely something that we're actually doing something about it's important to us and all the processes, getting the permits from city councils, all of that is actually being looked at. And the Ministry of Economy and the uh, Ministry of Industry of Trade actually um, quite anxious to get that done as quickly as possible. With respect to, I think I will be able to finish in five minutes, with respect to the expansion of the export base, um, as I had said earlier on, uh, I think there was a speaker's debate gentleman, the handsome gentleman on my right, happens to be my best friend. And in many ways, uh, we're actually, we have a concerted effort between the two ministries to try and expand our export base. Uh, with, and it's actually agriculture and the industry, uh, Ministry of Industry and Tourism, and obviously um, our lands also, is quite heavily involved in trying to get as many people uh, into farming, so agriculture base needs to increase, we need to value add on the things and the value chain needs to increase. There is a, a serious effort from both ministries to, to actually uh, see that we can expand our uh, export base. And it's not just about the agriculture part, it's actually the Ministry of Industry and Tourism also involved in all the symposiums that we have that, uh, offshore to try and find new markets for Fiji. One of the things that the Minister has mentioned was about organic, that is something that we can make a hell of a lot of money out of. And and it, you know, we are all organic by nature. And it's something that Fiji can develop and turn into a, a, a very strong industry. And we, you know, whoever's actually getting involved in it, uh, they, get, they fetch a whole, lot, a whole lot more money than just <coughs> normal agriculture items. We've actually uh, done a survey, as the minister pointed out. Singapore is one of the places that we can. There are other places uh, that we actually want to source to send all of these things. And one of the other things that comes out of this, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that the Fijian brand name has a very pristine brand name overseas, and we need to capitalize on that. And just as an example, some of you may know, some of you may not know, there is a gentleman who uh, exports ginger, organic ginger, out of uh, an island here in Fiji. And the testing that was done by him, if I'm correct, Minister, the ginger that comes out of Fiji is 500 times more powerful than any other ginger in the world. It's just as an example. And uh, turmeric, that is freely available, the wild turmeric, and that's been combined and turned into something. So it's just an example of what we can do. We can turn ourselves into eventually a really, really uh, phenomenal organic um, producing vegetables, and, and etc. cetera, um, for consumption around the world. In a nutshell, that's it. Thank you very much.